I have potentially what is going to be the most beautiful palette for swatch and sip of the entire year. It is the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 4 palette. <laughs> Last year's was insane, so I absolutely, positively had to get my hands on this palette. But before we get into it, welcome to Swatch and Sip. If you don't know what we do at Swatch and Sip, we sit here, we sip our drinks. So pause right now if you don't have yours. I made myself a lovely iced coffee for the morning. It's actually like 11 and I've been holding off of my drink for this video and <laughs> I was starting to get a headache, so... Mm, I needed that. And then we swatch beautiful eyeshadows and just enjoy the shifts and glimmers for what they are. This is what gives me joy in makeup, so let's go ahead and do it. So Danessa Meyers just launched her Lightwork Volume 4. Obviously, it's the fourth one, but it's the second one that is of a multi-chrome, multi-shift, multi-dimensional eyeshadow palette. And last year's I thought was so fun, so I definitely wanted to pick up this one. Now, the catch with these is they are a $125, yes, the same price as Pat McGrath, so better be good, right? And last year's, I kind of argued that it really wasn't worth the money, but I take that back. I mean, multicrims are expensive to formulate. At the end of the day, I feel like it was just a really great starter multi-chrome palette, and this looks different. It looks amped up. I'm excited to talk about it because I've played with all of the formulas on my eyes today, and I have to tell you, I hate to start this off negatively, but I have met my match when it comes to this palette. I had some difficulties applying it. I don't see it as um, the everyday person kind of palette because I find myself to be pretty experienced with makeup and I kind of struggled with this. I looked up ways to apply it. So this is a palette that I do not feel comfortable reviewing. I haven't gotten a full handle on it, which is why we're gonna do a swatch and sip. I'm going to spend more time kind of figuring out how it works best for me, but I'll share my experience with it as a beginner, but if I just don't see it being very good for beginners for makeup. I'll get started with that. I'll talk about that more as we get into it. So the palette comes in this packaging right here. It has a 12 month shelf life and is made in China. On the back, you are going to have all of the names here. And when you open it, it is gonna come with a sleeve that directs you to exactly what the formulas are, not the names of the palette, which I like. And then boom, here are the colors. I feel like this is great because I feel like it's so different from last year's, but obviously it's the same concept. And I feel like when it comes to multi-chrome shifty shades, how different can you get? You know, they all eventually kind of have the same shifts. <laughs> so I actually feel happy this one is a little bit more dual toned and deeper. I feel like it's a little better for the fall time. But let's go ahead and get into it. So here are the formulas. There's two different formulas along the top and bottom. Most of them are going to be velvet chromes. So these four right here are velvet chromes. And then this one, and then these three are velvet chromes. And then the next formula is glass metallics, which is going to be angels and divinity. Then we have two aqua chromes, which need to be activated with water, and then two pressed chrome flakes. Let's go ahead and swatch all of the velvet chromes to begin with. I think that's the more classic formula here, and it's my personal favorite, so sip real quick. So we're gonna go in with Trance, Nirvana. My nails aren't dirty, it's just from playing with this palette before filming. Sixth Sense and Out of Body, which I know is gonna be insane. So sometimes it's easier to look at them and there's shifts on the fingers. So take note if you are interested in any of these shades. This has a green blue shift. I mean, it's difficult to describe the shifts. You're gonna have to let your eyes do the talking here. This has a purple blue shift. Are we ready? So we have Trance. There you can see that shift, pretty intense. Nirvana, which I'm excited about because this is gonna be one of the more wearable shades. So if you're intimidated, by multi-chromes and duochromes, this is one that you might be able to get work for you. I saw a pretty cool look on Danessa Myrick's Instagram page, which was very wearable, that utilized this shade. Then we have Sixth Sense, which also could translate into something wearable, right? This one is really gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous for brightening the eyelid. Then we have Out of Body, which I feel like I have a few shades that are like this shade. But dang, it is core. Joss, and you can see just how thick pigmented they are swatching. 
It's intense. Beautiful, beautiful quality here. Then we have Zen, skipping this one. Trippy, escapism. And I literally skipped the finger for what? But then we're gonna go into Awakening, which I actually have all over my eyelid. So I'm really excited to use Zen. I think this is gonna be great for fall. And this shade can like swatch the whole way down my arm. That's impressive. Then we're gonna get into Trippy, right? Which has kind of a Sextra Terrestrial from Pat McGrath vibe. So pretty. Escapism. Oh my gosh. Yes, I mean, you can see all the shifts just right here, the way that my arm is angled. And then I have Awakening, which you'll see in my tutorial. I did use that all over the lid, and that's stunning. So all of these have so much coverage and pigment to them. This is absolutely a beautiful formula. If you were to buy these shades individually from an indie brand, they would be like $20 each. So that's why I think these are great for a multi-chrome beginner's collection. If you have a lot from the indie brands, I'm not gonna lie, the indie brands carry more glimmer shimmers. They're a little bit better quality, but the Danessa Myricks is a great base for sure. I didn't even show you my finger. Like, Look what's left over. And then we're gonna get into the glass metallics, which are going to be Definity, which I haven't swatched yet. And then Angels, which I used on the inner corner. Both are so pretty, right? So these are gonna be more kind of toppery, but they still carry a big base to them. So this is that Divinity shade. As you can see, it does not have the coverage of the other formula, but still is gonna look gorgeous. And then Angels is the perfect highlight shade in this palette. It's not as smooth looking as these guys up top. These will absolutely be holding their own weight, right? I mean, this right here sells the palette. Look at this. The next four shades you're gonna see me kind of struggle with, but wow. Okay, we've got to talk about the next shades. I want to do the pressed chrome flakes next. I do have one of the pressed chrome flakes on my eyelid. I'm really not a fan of these. I find these messy and hard to use. So if you just go like this, you're really not going to get much. And it's going to swatch really patchy. So the best way to use these, and I've watched her videos, you almost have to like warm it up and break the seal, which I don't like doing that. And anyways, when I do that, and I'm getting in there, I still find it swatches really patchy. So this is the shade Heaven. Okay, that's the best one I've been able to get so far. Let's see how this one does. That's the best one so far. I've really struggled up and... Oh my gosh, it's making a liar out of me because when I've been trying to use this, it's been super patchy and difficult. And I mean, you see how beautiful this looks? This literally made a liar out of me. Okay, let's do the other one, <laughs> and then I'll talk about this formula a little more. So, Paradise is what I have on the eyelid right now. I'm really going to get in there. You can see we have some flakes falling. She's messy, and this is what I'm talking about. I just, I can't get any pickup. I got to dig into it flat against the table. I don't know how I got a good one on Heaven, but I did. But I'm struggling with Paradise, and I was struggling with Heaven before. So, you almost have to, like, get a literal flake and then spread it out. You see, it's just not, it's not easy to use, you guys. It looks really gorgeous, but you see I literally have to warm it up and push it out, and that is super intense and rough for the eyelid. I tried to use this on my eyelid and it was tugging and that's just not good for the skin. I don't know, you really have to take your time and almost warm the product up to get it as creamy as possible, and you want it to be creamy so that it applies easily, so it seems that I've broken enough of the seal for heaven for it to be creamy, but Paradise, I mean, I've gotten in there, I've used it, I'm just not getting to a creamy part of it. I'm making a huge mess. Okay, I really just dug in there. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie. If you're willing to put up with this, have at it. In terms of swatch and sip, this is satisfying. <laughs> but in terms of application on the eyelid for the everyday person, I'm just, I'm not in love with it. Okay, let me clean off my disgusting hand now. But that looks impressive. I mean, look what I had to do to get in there. It's just, it's not an easy to use functional formula. If you're into editorial looks, have at it, but I just don't see myself wanting to deal with this really at all. And it's getting stuck all up in my fingers. Sip. Last formula are the aqua chromes. And I'm kind of trying to figure out how much water I need. I've been playing with these. It's not been impressing me. I know they said like 
two to three drops of water. So I'm gonna put a really light spray into one of the shades. So I got just a little bit in intuition because at first I definitely applied too much water, but the less the better because I feel like it just spreads right on the top layer here. And then I have trouble getting a little bit of pigment. Here's what it looks like when I feel like the water is freshly applied. It's not that impressive, right? It's too watery, you don't get the pigment. What I find is you almost need to let the water dry down a little bit so that you can actually pick up the product. So it's dried down a little bit. This is what it looks like now. But this just doesn't have the opacity that the velvet chromes have. And the catch with this though is once it dries, it's not going anywhere, but I found this really difficult to apply. I tried to do a look where I put down my base shadows and then I used a water activated shade on my eyelid, but it was so sticky on my eyelid, it was creasy and separated. And then I put a chrome flake on top and oh my gosh, it was the most awful, disastrous, crepey, creasy look I've ever created. <laughs> so that's why I'm quite dubious of this. I'm gonna go ahead into Aura now, just spraying literally a little, a few drops, cause it's not working when I apply too much. It just sits kind of on top of the product and see it gets really watery, so let me let it dry. If you have any tips for me on this palette, please help me out. It is not often that I am struggling <laughs> so much with the palette. Here's Aura, looks pretty. It's just not impressive for me. I'm so impressed by the velvet chromes that I don't even need this water activated stuff, you know? But here's the palette. I mean, this is really impressive. This is Danessa Myrick's artistry right here. I feel like to love this palette, you have to have an artistic mind and be very creative. I don't with my boring, soft, glam kind of looks. That's my style of makeup. This definitely takes me out of my comfort zone, that's for certain. The best part about these swatch and sips is just looking at them, right? So overall, I mean, like I said, this is not a review of this palette because I've got a lot to learn before I feel comfortable giving my thoughts on it. But I mean, on my first use today, I really, really struggled with it. I don't see it being super easy to work with if you're playing with the middle row for the average user. But the outside shades, the velvet chromes and the glass metallics are just phenomenal. Uh, so I'm going to continue playing this. I'll keep you guys updated, but I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with this palette. <laughs> so we will see. Like I said, I'm wearing a couple shades from this palette right now. I'm going to go ahead and take you over to that tutorial so you can see a couple of the formulas in action. Yay, yay. Creating these looks have been a struggle. I'm on my third eye look and this is the one that I'm just going to have to wear. This palette definitely has a learning curve. I'm going to use some of a weight why does my finger look like this? It has all the chrome flakes stuck in here. My fingers are gross. It's the chrome flake from messing with it. I'm gonna go into Awakening. And this is not a unique duo chrome, multi chrome, whatever it is. But I'm gonna put that all over my lid. Very smooth, beautiful application. But let me blend that in. And I used the purple shades from the Matte About Hue palette from ColourPop on my eyelid, by the way, as the base matte shades. I'm gonna blend that. Okay, and then I had to do a look with one of the chrome flakes. And I'm really struggling with these chrome flakes. I know you kind of gotta warm them up almost like break the seal kind of situation, but it really tugs on my eyelid to apply it. And I just feel like I know there are flakes and they're supposed to look like flakes, but it just looks really messy to me. It's not my style of makeup, that's for sure. But I do find these messy and hard to work with. And for the editorial gal, I mean, I think you'll appreciate this more than me. Oh yeah, yeah, but I am not. I'm not feeling it, but that's that's what we gotta do. <laughs> that's all I got, you guys. <laughs> that's all I can do. To finish off the look, I'm gonna go in with Angels down here. And this one is kind of a more sheer shade. So it does not look like that based on how I applied it, but this is the perfect kind of our corner color to finish off any look with this palette. And then I'm gonna go back into Awakening, and I just wanna run that over my lower lash line as well. 
just like that to bring in the duochrome element. So buttery smooth. Okay, amazing. That's all I'm doing for the look. I'm gonna do liner and lashes and all of that. And there we have it. This is my final look. I'm not really in love with it, but <laughs> I definitely want to continue playing with this palette though because I've seen on Danessa Myrick's Instagram some really stunning looks that she's done. There's one neutral look. I don't know which exactly shade she used, but she had like a warm brown in the crease and just one of those in all over the eyelid and it was so beautiful. I'm really excited to figure that out. If you have any tips for me on the middle row, I need them. So thanks so much for taking your time hanging out with me, swatching some absolutely stunning eyeshadows. And if you picked up this palette, let me know your thoughts. I feel like everybody's in love with it and I'm just not, I'm not there. I don't have the proper tools. I know she re recommends like silicone applicators. I just don't know that this is my jam. Anyways, it's pretty swatch. So I'm happy I could make a video out of it and hang out with you guys. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye guys, have a good one.